For a long time, there's been this quiet truth driving the entire digital economy. Kind of in the background, but absolutely fundamental. It's this. The world's most advanced chips, the ones that run everything from smartphones to data centers to AI models, can only be built with an insanely complex piece of machinery that only one company on Earth knows how to make. That company is ASML. Now, when I say complex, I mean really complex. We're talking about machines the size of a bus that rely on physics operating at the edge of what's even possible, producing light so precise that it's measured in fractions of nanometers. These systems are what allow companies like TSMC and Samsung to etch billions of transistors onto a piece of silicon the size of your fingernail. That technology, EUV lithography, is the bottleneck. It's the key that unlocks high-end chip making. And ASML, based in the Netherlands, is the only one that has it. Total monopoly. They've spent over two decades building it, layer by layer, with partners from all over the world, integrating incredibly specialized technologies, mirrors from Germany, lenses from Japan, light sources, chambers, vacuum systems, all synchronized within atomic tolerances, and the way it works is wild. They use two high-powered lasers, one to prep, one to punch, firing thousands of pulses per second at tiny droplets of molten tin. These droplets, falling through a vacuum, are vaporized into plasma, which emits EUV light at a wavelength of 13.5 nanometers. That light is bounced off incredibly delicate, multi-layer mirrors and projected onto wafers. It's basically controlled starlight, and it's so sensitive that even a speck of dust or a tiny bit of debris from the tin can ruin the whole process. But here's the problem, or at least the hidden cost. This system is wildly inefficient from a physics perspective. Only a tiny fraction, less than 0.1% of the energy put into the lasers is converted into usable EUV light. The rest? Heat. Waste. Complexity. That means you need huge cooling systems, sophisticated vacuum control, debris mitigation tools, and redundant safety systems. The energy demand of just one of these machines is comparable to what an entire town might consume. Now imagine a chip fab with dozens of these machines running 24-7. The energy cost alone is staggering, and that has real consequences for climate, for infrastructure, and for who even has the ability to compete at the leading edge. Basically, if you don't have rock-solid power infrastructure and billions in capital, you're not in the game. That's why access to ASML's EUV tools became a kind of geopolitical lever. The United States, along with its allies in the Netherlands, Japan, and South Korea, used export controls to limit who could buy these systems, especially China. The thinking was, if China can't get EUV, they can't make the chips needed for advanced AI, military systems, or quantum computing. It became a kind of techno-containment strategy. But so there's been a leak, a blueprint, that points to a completely different approach to EUV. One that doesn't use ASML's massive laser-based system. One that could, and this is the wild part, use 90% less power. If that's true, that's not just an engineering win. That's a redefinition of the entire field. The method is called laser-induced discharge plasma, or LDP. It's still aiming for the same goal, producing EUV light at the magical 13.5 nanometers. But the approach is fundamentally different. Instead of blasting tin droplets with two giant lasers, the LDP method starts with a small, low-energy pre-pulse laser. That's just enough to create a tiny plasma plume. Then, a powerful electrical discharge is introduced between two electrodes. This discharge flows directly through the preformed plasma, rapidly heating it to the extreme temperatures needed to emit EUV light. Why is that so significant? Because you're not converting electrical energy to laser energy to heat to plasma. You're going straight from electrical discharge to plasma excitation. That's a much more direct path. Fewer steps, less loss, from a first principles physics standpoint, it makes total sense that this would be more efficient. That's how you get the 90% reduction in energy use. And if that number holds at scale, if they can achieve the same level of throughput as ASML's systems, then we're looking at a complete disruption 
of the current chip making paradigm. Now to be clear, this is not plug and play. There are still immense challenges. You still need ultra precise optics to direct and shape the EUV light. You still need photo resistance that can survive EUV exposure and faithfully transfer the pattern to the wafer. You need ultra clean environments, defect free masks, and advanced inspection tools. So while the light source may be simpler and more efficient, the rest of the system remains incredibly demanding. But even so, this changes the game because what was once a billion dollar high barrier low yield process might now become smaller, cheaper, and more accessible. Who knows what the future will bring, but I think either way we'll, we'll have successfully proven what we were taught as a service that didn't. And that brings us to SMIC, China's leading semiconductor foundry. They've done something that quite frankly most people thought was impossible. They've managed to produce five pillar chips not with EUV, but using the older DUV systems. Deep ultraviolet lithography. That's like trying to build a precision watch using welding tools. WV uses 193 nm light, much longer than EUV's 13.5 nm, which makes it inherently less capable of producing very fine features. But SMIC reportedly achieved 5m by using aggressive multi-patterning. That means printing, etching, aligning and reprinting multiple times to simulate the resolution you'd normally get with EUV. It's hard, it's slow, it's expensive, but they did it. And that proves something massive. They don't need to wait for EUV access to move forward. So now you've got two vectors converging. On one hand, China is brute forcing its way into advanced chip making using legacy tools and clever techniques. On the other hand, it may have a next-generation EUV system that uses radically less energy. Potentially leapfrog. Put those together and you get something bigger than just a chip breakthrough. You get technological sovereignty. No more dependence on foreign suppliers for critical tools. No more reliance on a global supply chain that can be shut down with a phone call. This kind of independence, especially in semiconductors, is huge. Because chips are not just about economics. They're national security. They're the foundation of AI, autonomous weapons, supercomputers, 5G, even energy grids. Whoever leads in semiconductors leads in everything else. And that's what's really at stake here. This isn't just a new light source. It's a shift in the global balance of technological power. But again, none of this is easy. China still has to solve the entire upstream and downstream ecosystem including the mirrors, the materials, the software automation, the talent pipeline. ASML has a 20-year head start and partnerships with hundreds of specialized suppliers that can't be replicated overnight. The question now is how fast can China close that gap and more importantly, will the rest of the world accelerate in response? Because the chip war just entered a new phase. It's no longer about just who controls the tools, it's about who controls the physics. And as history has shown us again and again, breakthroughs in physics always rewrite the rules of power. So if this blueprint is real, if China has indeed figured out a way to produce EUV with 90% less energy, the implications are enormous. Fabs will get cheaper, access will broaden, export controls will weaken, entire supply chains may shift. And the idea of a single nation controlling the future of chips, that may be over. This is bigger than just technology. It's the start of a new world order in computation. Stay curious. The future is being written.